here at WashingtonPost.com is a story by Hannah Knowles entitled, People Can't Agree on What to Do About Florida's Herpes-Infected Monkeys. And Hannah begins, The monkeys, just six of them, arrived in the 1930s as tourist attractions, confined to an island in a central Florida river. The problem was, they can swim. The furry, pink-faced creatures native to Asia soon spread and multiplied in what is now Silver Springs State Park, capturing the hearts of visitors who traveled the lush river in glass-bottom boats and confounding conservationists who want to rein them in. They're adorable, but undeniably invasive. Experts worry their growing ranks will hurt other species, and to top it off, Many of the monkeys carry a form of the herpes virus. The debate about whether and how to control the 4,000-acre park's rhesus macaques has reignited in recent weeks after a spate of far-flung monkey sightings brought alarm and blazing headlines. They're here! One news station declared after the animals showed up as far as 100 miles north in Jacksonville. But park officials are no longer trying to tamp down the macaque population. It's a testament, researchers say, to the messy problem of managing an invasive species that has become a tourist highlight, complete with its own urban legend. The monkeys did not escape from the scent of a Tarzan movie. Jane Anderson, an assistant professor of research at the Caesar Clayburgh Wildlife Research Institute, who has studied the monkey's growth over the years, said, People feel really emotionally connected to these animals. Emotionally connected, and that makes it much harder to convey that we need to implement population management for an animal that's less cute and cuddly. Rhesus macaques have been known to wreak havoc, on new habitats. In Puerto Rico, studies note, their introduction in the 60s destroyed seabird populations as the monkeys devoured their eggs. In the early 2000s, the island territory's agricultural department found that commercial farms were losing millions of dollars because of macaques and one other monkey species. The macaques taught them how to do it. Anderson estimates 550 to 600 macaques now living in northern central Florida. And he frets that more growth could bring serious consequences for area birds such as quails. The macaque population along Florida's Silver River has, has ballooned, had ballooned to nearly 400 by 1984, according to a paper by Anderson and her colleagues. About a thousand of the area's monkeys were trapped and sold for biomedical research over the next several decades, they write. As people grew concerned, they might be plundering birds' nests and could pass on viruses to humans. The macaque's herpes B has only been transmitted to people in the lab. But in rare cases that humans get the virus, it can be deadly. The trapping and selling drew its own backlash, however, from animal rights groups and others concerned for the monkey's welfare. One animal rights organization spokesman said in 2013, calling on officials to catch and sterilize instead. It is a tragedy that wild monkeys are torn from their families and forest homes and sold to research and testing labs. But researchers also say sterilization is expensive and budgets are tight. Stephen Johnson, an academic who advocates cutting the monkey population, acknowledges there is no easy solution now that the macaques have made themselves at home. What do you do with the monkeys? The University of Florida associate professor told the Washington Post. If you bring them out alive, something has to be done with them. Other less lovable invasive Florida species, such as the Burmese python, 
are far easier to cull without raising public outcry. Don't separate those snakes from their families. You're ruining those snake family units. And so, since 2012, efforts to thin Silver River's monkeys have stopped. Instead of trying to manage the population, officials warned tourists to keep their distance. Craig Litauer, a Park Services specialist, said we tell people not to approach them, not to feed them, because we want people to stay safe. He emphasized that the monkeys are just one of a host of local wild animals, from black bears to bobcats. They can act unpredictably. Yeah, they can tear your face off, can't they? They're strong. Maybe not macaques. Maybe they can just tear off a nose or something. But uh, primates are strong. The Florida Park Service posts signs and flyers reminding people to keep a safe distance from wildlife. And staff may temporarily close areas where they spot monkeys during morning, during morning checks for safety and maintenance. After that time, you're on your own. <laughs>